19th of January, and I hope the weather is going to start trying to be a little warming from now on. The last time I uh, put out a video, it was part 11 on this greenhouse heating system. I made some very serious errors on how much uh, heat I was putting into the greenhouse and how much uh, water was flowing into the system. And it actually got a lot of more accuracy. One thing I did notice was this winter has been a little colder on average than normal. Uh, we had a lot of nights that were close to zero Fahrenheit, that is. So, as you can see, the uh, tomatoes here didn't fare very well. If you're going to try to build an above-ground greenhouse in a similar climate to what I've got, there's a lot of challenges to uh, trying to keep your heat loss down. And you're going to have to put some heat into it. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. But I think today I can show you what this thing is doing as far as heat loss and how much heat you have to put in it. So let's get on with that and uh, let me show you what we've got. Okay, it's a nice sunny day today and it looks like we're getting 10 amps at, it looks to me like 250 volts. So that's 2,500 watts. And if you look at this, it looks like 88.1 in and 102.1 out. I just went 102.2. So well, let's calculate what the flow rate is off of that when we know we've got 1500 watts and the difference in the temperature. Okay, now don't let this little uh, chart scare you. What I wanted to show you here is uh, with the real data that I now have, I know how much power is going into that water heater and I know what the temperature rise of the water that is going through there is. So with those two known quantities you can calculate the unknown quantity which is how much water is going through that water heater. And going through the math it looks like we're about 73 gallons an hour. Now in the previous video I had uh, thought I had about 200 gallons an hour and of course uh, I was way off. So this number is probably not exactly accurate, but it's probably much closer to reality. Look at the thermometers here right now. You can see it's 67 going out and 82 going in. Right now the temperature in the greenhouse is 46 degrees, and it's about 20 degrees outside. Overnight last night it got down to uh, I think about 10 degrees outside and it says here it got, it got down to 36 degrees in here with that heater running. Okay now getting back to the temperature differential of the water across that heater it comes up to 15.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if you do the math on that that comes uh, to 9315 BTUs an hour which translates to once you convert it to 2730 watts. Now keep in mind that when we looked at the thermometer inside a minute ago, it was 46 degrees inside while it was about 20 degrees outside. Now that's 26 degrees difference. Now it got down to 10 degrees overnight and the recording thermometer inside the greenhouse said it got down to 36 degrees inside the greenhouse. Again, that's a 26 degree differential from inside to outside. So it's a consistent number that we're, we're able to maintain a 26 degree differential between the inside and the outside temperature of the greenhouse right now. Okay, we need to get to an R value, insulation value that is, for the entire greenhouse because, because that's important to know. Now, here's what we do now. At best, I'm able to maintain a 26 degree differential temperature from inside to outside with 2730 watts of heat. My greenhouse surface area is about a thousand square feet. Do a little arithmetic, that means that you got 2.7 watts per square foot that you're losing, or 9.3 BTUs per hour of heat that you're losing per square foot. Now, doing the math, that comes out to an R value of about 2.79, which seems surprisingly high to me. Now, keep in mind that 6 mil polyfilm is about an R value of 0.83, 
which is what I have on one side of my greenhouse wall. The other side of the greenhouse wall is made out of polycarbonate, which is also about 0.83. So you do the arithmetic, and that says that the air gap in between them must be about 1.13 to order to come up to the uh, 2.79 R value. Most literature will tell you an air gap as wide as a 2 by 4 piece of lumber will not do that well due to convection currents. But keep in mind that most of my double pane plastic is not on vertical walls. Perhaps that makes a difference. Maybe convection currents are a little more difficult to set up that way. Either that's the case, or there might be something wrong with my calculations. But that's what the numbers show. Okay, so now we have figured out those parameters. What can you do with that? Well, if you're going to build your own greenhouse, and you want to try to make it a wintertime greenhouse, where you're going to be able to grow things all year round in it, you, you've got to you've got to build it so that you can be able to do that. And now that I know the parameters of this greenhouse, basically it translates down to this. There's a formula for the heat loss through any medium. And what that formula is is it goes uh, heat loss equals U times A times delta T. Now U is a representation of the medium that you're trying to calculate the heat loss through. And for us, the characteristics, we're going to just use the R value of the material, okay? Now, the A is, of course, the surface area, and we know what that is. And the delta T, of course, we know what that is. Now, if 26 degrees isn't going to hack it for you, like it's not going to hack it for me, obviously, uh, you can mess around with the other two parameters. I can increase the heat to get uh, maybe 50 degrees different, so that might do it. Or uh, I can change the, uh, the R value parameters. But the R value here, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because it's just going to cost too much, so I'm not going to bother with it. So for me, what I'm probably going to do is give up trying to use this greenhouse during the winter to grow crops, except for the winter hardy kind of things, you know, like the broccolis and the cauliflowers and celery and some things like that because it just won't do tomatoes it just gets too cold in here and I don't want to spend the money to put the additional heat in now I've got solar and you say well what about that well this year I have learned you know some things you learn by feeling that we've had a unusually uh, a harsh winter here and we didn't get much solar during the day uh, a lot of snowstorms covered the uh, panels uh, and then a lot of other times it was so overcast that it didn't get much uh, solar power at all. So those things do happen. So I'm not going to count on doing this through the winter, but you could. Because here's what you can do. You can mess with those other parameters. You don't need a greenhouse quite this big. See, this is about 40 by 24. Now, maybe you only need something like a 12 by uh, 20, 12 by 20 or something like that. That's still a pretty good sized greenhouse for someone's home to provide fresh vegetables and things like that during the winter. So what that does is that that takes both parameters down to about half, meaning the width and the length. But what that does to the surface area is that makes the surface area one quarter what I've got. But with the surface area down to one quarter what it is in my house, my greenhouse, what you've done is you've uh, quadrupled the effect of the same amount of heat I'm using. Okay, let's go back to our little formula about heat loss, UA delta T. And, and about arithmetic, when you, when you do arithmetic operations, if you increase something on one side, you've got to increase something on the other side. That's, it's like a teeter-totter uh, on that equal sign there. Okay, so let's play a couple of games here. One of them is, remember, we proposed reducing the surface area, reducing the size of our greenhouse, down by a factor of 4. So when you do that, that means the other side of the equation has to also go down by a factor of 4, which means our heat loss will go down by a factor of 4, to maintain the 26 degrees, that is. So 
remember it was a thousand square feet we were talking about now we're down to 250 square feet so what happens here is that uh, the heat loss remember and the heat that we were putting in were equal because we were using that amount of heat to maintain that 26 degree delta T now to maintain that 26 degree delta T we're only going to have to put in 683 watts because the heat loss is down by a factor of four but let's say well you know 26 degrees is just not going to cut it for me because you know it didn't cut it for me because the uh, tomatoes just wouldn't hack going down to 40 degrees every night so let's say what we do is instead of reducing the size of the heater by four because the heat loss is down by a factor of four let's re reduce the size of the heater by a factor of two so what happens when you do that well that means that now you've got to put something on the other side of that equation so to keep that balanced out what happens is this it was a 26 degree differential and to keep it balanced you'd have to double a factor of two the delta t so it's going to go down to a 52 degree differential so can you live with a 52 degree differential of course you can because even if it goes down to zero fahrenheit what that means is it's 52 degrees overnight in a greenhouse and that's probably pretty good well i hope this was helpful to you because uh, what i tried to do is show you the realities of what it takes to heat a wintertime greenhouse how much heat it takes and where your heat losses are and how much to expect for heat losses and i think i've shown you some ways where you can maybe change a few of those parameters to suit your needs now if you had a smaller greenhouse like i showed you a quarter this size which is still a pretty good size for a uh, small uh, home style greenhouse you know, if you if you got a 1500 watt heater that you can buy at the hardware store just a standard electric heater you should be able to do it now the question there is whether you want to pay for the power bill or not or find another way to heat it you can change some of the parameters that i've shown you on that uh, little equation you could make a smaller greenhouse you could increase the amount of heat that you have you could uh, maybe spend the money to get the uh, insulation of the uh, transparency a little better than I did. Uh, you can do a lot of things, but I hope what this has shown you is kind of a benchmark for the realities of what you can do and what maybe you're dreaming about might be a little impossible. But anyway, I, I hope this helped and uh, showed you some of the numbers, some of the realities of well, what it takes to keep a wintertime greenhouse if you live in a climate like I do.